My apologies for my late start. It took me longer to get back from Agua Ramon than I anticipated. I should have left earlier. I apologize. It's good to see you all. Today is Wednesday of Holy Week. We remember in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass the soul of Jesus Valdez, who died last Thursday. We remember Reverend Francis J. Butler, a priest of our diocese, who died on March 29, 1976. And for all of your intentions, all of our family present, those joining us via our Facebook Live stream. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers, my sisters, today we will again hear about the beginnings of the betrayal of Judas Iscariot, but we know that God is merciful and forgiving. We come before God with humble and contrite hearts. We acknowledge our sins. We trust in God's infinite mercy. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us your servants to attain the grace of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let him confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. 
I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For consolers, but one could, not one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See you lowly ones and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Lord, in your great love, answer me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went off to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he kept looking for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came up to Jesus and said, Where do you wish us to prepare the Passover supper for you? He said, Go to this man in the city and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. I am to celebrate the Passover with my disciples in your house. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover supper. When it grew dark, he reclined at table with the twelve. In the course of the meal, he said, I give you my word. One of you is about to betray me. Distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He replied, The man who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will hand me over. The Son of Man is departing, as Scripture says of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for him if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, spoke, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, It is you who have said it. The Gospel of the Lord. There's always a respect and a reverence for someone who's your teacher. And it's not uncommon for little boys to fall in love with their teachers, right? I had a crush on my second grade teacher, Mrs. Winston. Uh, Mrs. Carroll was her maiden name. And she was a member of our church. I didn't know it, but she went to another mass. She didn't go to the 8 o'clock Spanish mass. She went to another mass, so I didn't know it. But in right about this time of year, Easter, she got married, and she became MRS Winston, Miss Winston. So my work for getting married was all changed. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> God's calling me the priesthood anyway. But anyway... <laughs> Jesus is Lord, we hear over and over again. The apostles today said, Lord, surely it is not I, Lord, who will betray you. Eleven of them said, Lord, to our Lord Jesus Christ. 
One said, teacher, the Jewish word rabbi, rabbi, teacher. Judas Iscariot, who would betray him, had lowered Jesus' uh, status from Lord, a divine title, to rabbi, teacher. And that reflects the fact that he was set on the things of this world, the treasure that they collected, and the plan that Judas had to show the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees, anybody who opposed Jesus, even the zealots who opposed Jesus, he wanted to show them that Jesus had divine power. And so his plan was to hand Jesus over, to force his hand to show his divine power, to save himself. But Jesus didn't come to save himself. He came to save us. He came to redeem the whole world. And that, my brothers and sisters, is, is, is why Jesus was more than a teacher. Jesus is Lord. That's why we gathered here, to receive him in the Eucharist, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And so, as we go through this Holy Week, we have to be aware of the fact that we might reduce Jesus to nothing but a teacher. You see, if Jesus was just this amazing teacher, then what are we doing here? But Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. Jesus is true God and true man. And we're here to receive him in the Eucharist. We're here to worship him. We're here to make this week holy. After Mass, I'll be hearing confessions. So we're here to prepare ourselves, if we need to, sacramentally for the great feast of Easter coming up in the Paschal Triduum. So um, when you watch Notre Dame football, you see the image um, to the north side of the stadium. It's Christ the teacher. Some would call him touchdown Jesus during football games, but he's Christ the teacher. And yes, he is a teacher, but he's more. He's our Lord. And I hope Miss Carol is happily married all these years later and that she has many grandchildren. I'm very happy being a priest. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us turn to God, our Heavenly Father, with our prayers that we may treasure his teachings, but love him as our Lord. For Francis, our Pope, for Stephen, our Bishop, for all those who hold and teach the Catholic faith that comes to us from the Apostles, that we may continue to treasure the deposit of faith that's handed on to us in divine worship. We pray to the Lord. We pray for President Biden and for all leaders of all nations that they continue to work to diminish the effects of COVID-19 and to allow those who wish, all peoples, we hope, to receive the vaccine as soon as humanly possible. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the poor and the needy, that they not despair but that they find hope in God's providential care for them through our charity and the charity of all the baptized. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our church of the Sacred Heart that during this Holy Week we dispose our hearts to his heart and that we continue to acknowledge him as Lord as the faithful apostles did. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for the eternal happiness of the souls of Father Francis J. Butler, who died on March 29, 1976, a priest of our diocese, and for Jesus Valdez, who died last Thursday and whose mass of Christian burial is next Thursday. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, 
you revealed in your son great teachings yet through the cross and resurrection he revealed himself as Lord may we worship and reverence him always as the Lord of our lives hear the prayers we offer grant them to your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here, and graciously grant that, celebrating your Son's passion and mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Father Francis J. Butler and Jesus Valdez, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with St. Therese of the Child Jesus, patroness of our diocese, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, has taken the gifts of bread and wine and now offers us his body, blood, soul, and divinity on the sacred altar of this Eucharistic table. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
our communion antiphon, together we say, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This past weekend, we'll proceed up the middle aisles and then side aisles return to our pews.
Let us pray. Endow us, Almighty God, with the firm conviction that through your Son's death in time, to which the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life through Christ our Lord. We'll expose the Blessed Sacrament in a moment. It'll be here till 3 o'clock when we'll have benediction. I'll be available for confession as long as there are people standing on the green dots. Please make sure you social distance and keep the green dots. Uh, tomorrow there'll be no daily Mass at 8 a.m., but we will celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper at 6, followed by confessions as long as necessary. On Good Friday we'll have Mass at 6 p.m., followed by confessions as long as necessary. No confession Saturday, and then the vigil begins at 8 p.m. Uh, then our regular Sunday schedule, 8.30, 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Uh, the 8.30 is a bilingual Mass. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.